Hey everybody, hey. welcome back to Down and Dirty Modding. Today we are going to look at the next step in our Fractal R4 project, and that is water cooling. Uh, now, we're just going to be cooling the CPU and not going crazy like we did with Hardline and stuff in my Man in Black build here, uh, which kind of showcases what you can do, the, the artistic side of water cooling with the, the see-through blocks and all that jazz. Very pretty, very nice, uh, but we're looking for performance, um, ease, of, ease of putting it together, and also not jumping to that next level because water cooling can get expensive. Uh, but And on top of that, I don't think they actually, I can find a 770 block for my card, so we're not gonna worry about it. We're gonna get the, the CPU today, or we're gonna talk about the CPU today because we are gonna be able to clock that up over four gigahertz and cooling it's gonna be really handy. Uh, now today in water cooling, you have a ton of options. Um, everything from all-in-ones to uh, designed uh, pre-boxed kits uh, up into custom cooling loops. And we're gonna look at custom cooling loops. Maybe if I get some products for the other others, like the other ones and the, the kits, maybe I'll look at those. But I like the idea of doing a custom loop because that allows me to go in and pick the best products or the products to match my bill. Um, and and no, nothing against any of the kits out there, but um, you know, if you buy an EK, uh, I've got a performance kit that I won in a contest and it's it's nice. It's got all the right components, it's got all the stuff to do it, but it's an EK block and an EK res and an EK pump and, and I like the EK blocks, but I'm not a big fan of their uh, pump enabled reservoirs uh, and I really don't think it'll fit this build. So buying that kit would not help me out because I just have to go back out and buy a res and a pump uh, that would fit the build. So I'm, I'm out more money. So by piecing this stuff together, you know, one, one by one, you can pick the best parts that you have or that you, you can find for your build, stuff that matches your build or fits in better. Um, so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna look at the components that you're gonna need to grab for a uh, custom loop. Um, and then next time we'll actually get into the installation of the loop. Uh, so let's start off with our CPU block. Now luckily I do have a few uh, parts laying around. So. Uh, that's what part of this build is going to be, is, is going to be uh, this EK Supremacy CPU block that came out of a couple other builds. It's a very solid block, uh, not real flashy, which is fine, it's acetyl, but uh, basically it's, it's basically just a, uh, a nickel plate with an uh, acetyl top. It's going to have some fins on that nickel plate that when the water goes across it gives it more surface area to draw heat up. Um, so that's going to be our block that we're using. The next thing you will need is probably a reservoir and a pump. And Intermax was nice enough to send me a new a Neo Changer, which I haven't really got to play around with a whole lot. Uh, I did pull it out and look at it. It looks pretty slick. And what this is is a reservoir with a built-in pump, and that's what the, the pump enabled. If you look at a lot of reses, um, you'll get the option to have like a D5 enabled pump. And I'm not sure what pump this is. I'm, I'm betting from the shape it's something related to a D5. But what that is, is the standard reservoir, except that bottom cap is uh, basically set up to accept the pump. Um, so instead of having a, a pump float around with the top somewhere in your build, it's all on the res, it's all there. Um, but this thing's pretty solid. It's got some neat mounting options. Uh, this is, uh, let's see, an LED ring, and also comes with an LCD display for your pump speed, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, and it's also avoided some of the pitfalls that we've seen other manufacturers uh, fall into as far as the uh, single fill hole in the top, but you always want an extra for um, air to get out of your system. So um, this looks like it's going to be a pretty cool little option. I'm, I'm kind of excited to see what it what it works like and it's pretty heavy so uh, I think this is the oh man 300 milliliter option uh, which puts it around a what was it a 250 milliliter or 250 millimeter tall res that was the one thing that kind of threw me off about their their sizing was it was in milliliters as far as volume instead of the size where most customers go off of uh, um, well, a lot of reservoirs go off actual size. So, let's... Yeah. 
that's about a 200. It would normally match it to about a 200 mill, millimeter res. Um, then you got the D5 on the bottom, so it does have some height. Um, Reses, uh, man, this is this is the part where I like the custom ideas because you can go with something like this, or you can grab like, man, there's so many options out there. You can go to Primo Chill and build one of their CTR reses, which gives you options for uh, where your fill ports are, where your uh, you know if you want an extra coupling to extend, um, different sizes. It's there's just so much stuff in reservoirs. Um, that that makes doing it custom and piecing these together uh, totally worth it as far as I'm concerned. So I am excited to see how this works. Um, it should be pretty interesting. Uh, and I like that, that pump display. So more often than not, you're kind of guessing what your speed of your pump is or you have to jump into the BIOS. So this will let us know if it's, it's running and what speed it's running at. So uh, it'll be cool to see what this looks like when it's all put in. Um, and uh, see how it works. So I'll make sure to keep you updated on that. Uh, the next thing we've got, if I don't kick the table over, are our radiators. And what I've got are a couple of Alpha Cool 120 millimeter by 45 millimeter um, radiators. I bought these for a project, and they turned out to be, amazingly enough, too big. Um, when 120 millimeter radiator is too big for your project. Uh, but I, you know, I wound up going with 92s, but this is just a standard 120 millimeter radiator. It's 45, is it 45 millimeter stick. Yep. 45 millimeter stick, uh, which is not as slim, but it's not huge and, and monstrous. Uh, it does have six ports on the top. So that's kind of nice. It gives us a lot of options about where we want to, uh, run our, our lines. Um, the only bad thing about that is you need to have five caps or uh, four caps to plug off all the other holes. So that does kind of suck and add to the cost. But um, since I had these, I've, I've been thinking of ways to use them. And because I've got four and they're just sitting around and I don't really use 120s very often. So my plan for our fractal here is to stack a couple of these on top of each other so I get some cool tubing effect. Uh, normally with this one, I'd either just go with a full 360 or 240. Uh, but I'm thinking if I put them in here like this, they'll stack pretty nice. I can do fans and then I can have, uh, you know, a line coming in, a line jumping, and a line coming out. So I think that'll look kind of neat. I don't know. Um, it, it's, it's partly trying to get rid of stuff that I've got sitting around and partly uh, one to try something that I've never tried before and see how it looks. So that's what we're doing with our radiators. Um, and it should fit fairly nice in here. That's one thing about um, your reservoirs and your radiators. Before you start ordering and picking out parts, you really want to make sure that everything fits. Actually, you know, I could probably do three in there. That might be an option. That would look pretty cool. It would require a little bit of uh, fabrication. And actually, these are even going to require some fabrication because that, that front panel is such a big gap. I'm going to have to make a, a panel for these reservoirs or these radiators to sit on. Um, but you always want to uh, go into your case, look to see what it can hold and what you're gonna be able to fit because nothing's worse than getting in and you know buying this, this cool reservoir and this thick radiator and getting it in there and realizing that they don't work together because it, you know maybe the radiator takes up too much space, maybe it's too thick. Um, you know, radiators come from anywhere from like 30 millimeters or in the t upper 20s um deep to in the 60s i believe so there's really a lot of options there and you can really kind of uh, look or, look around for the right one that fits your build uh, another note on radiators as far as what you need to get um, typically for radiators the general suggestion is 120 millimeters for every item you're cooling so for us with just the cpu um, one 120 millimeter radiator would be okay it would be sufficient. Um, I'm going to go with two, maybe three, because uh, I can. And also, uh, that extra cooling will allow me to run my fans a little bit slower. So, uh, you know, rather than have to, to push one fan through, through one radiator uh, full tilt to keep it cool, I can tone those down because I've got way more surface area to get rid of heat. So, uh, that's the one nice thing about oversizing your radiators. Um, 
or using extra in my case. So it's going to be very interesting to see how that turns out. But but that's you know usually usually the the the, the standard of measure is one per unit, um, but it never hurts to have extra. So um, and then let's see our next thing that we need to look at is fittings. Now I've got some monsoon. Um, these are, man, I can't remember the name of them. Sorry, Gene. Uh, but they're really freaking cool. Monsoon makes some really nice fittings. These are their, their flex tube fittings. I think they're the free centers. Um, but basically it's a, a G quarter fitting, a G quarter thread with a barb on the end. Um, and then these nice caps are the keepers that uh, compress that uh, flex line onto our bar and keep it from flying off. Now th these are really nice. Um, I love the color of them and I love the look on the ends of these, on the, the fitting caps. Uh, definitely very nice and since I have a bunch of them that's what I'm going to use. And, and I'm going to throw some of their 90s in there too. Um, probably because of jumping between the radiators, I'm going to need some, some sharper turns rather than have a uh, flex line loop out real far. Um, and partially because it just makes it easier to go around spots sometimes. So, uh, none of these are never a bad thing. But yeah, these are monsoon fittings that we're going to use in red. Um, definitely, definitely awesome fittings. I, I love the look of those. Uh, next thing with our fittings is going to be uh, flex line. Now, I'm going to do flex this time because it's easy. It's a good way to step into water cooling. Um, you don't have to buy a heat gun to make your bends. You don't have to have the, the silicone insert for the bends. Um, and, and measuring and cutting and getting all this stuff to fit way easier. Uh, so much easier. So, and, and flex isn't bad. It, it has its place and it's definitely um, a good way of running things. So we're going to use, this is Primo Chill LRT Flex. Uh, it's, this is an older piece. I'm actually going to order some more. Uh, but it's fairly clear, um, it, let me think, this is 3 8 ID by half inch OD. You want to make sure that whatever flex line you get matches your fittings. You're, you're going to have inside dimensions and outside dimensions. So uh, the standard is pretty much 3 8 ID by half inch OD, uh, but there are some bigger or smaller or even metrics. So always check to make sure you're getting the same stuff. Um, so that's going to be what our, our tubing is going to consist of. Now, I will at some point in time probably go into a hard line tutorial, but there are tons of them out there right now. Um, I don't have a whole lot to add to it because I bend almost everything by hand and eyeball. So, you know, uh, a lot of these people will have the, the tools to actually get the right bend degrees and all that. And I just kind of basically hold it up until it looks right. And so uh, while it ends up looking good, it may not be the best way to teach people about how to do it, um, unless that's your style as well. So, uh, but that's for a future or whatever. Uh, right now, flex tubing, simple, easy. Um, and see, so yeah, I've got the last thing I'm going to shout out about is fluid. And we've got our always safe distilled water because you always safe. I don't know. Uh, it's just what my local store carries, but. This is deionized water or distilled water. Um, for a cooling loop, this technically works um, by itself. The, if you've got the right uh, radiators and blocks and fittings and all that, where you don't have a mix of aluminum and uh, nickel or copper, DI does almost everything you need to do. Uh, you will need to add some sort of biocide. Uh, Anti-corrosive is kind of handy because things just will sort of deteriorate and go to hell. Uh, DI, though, as long as you keep it changed out and keep it clean, um, you can run for quite a while with just DI water. Uh, maybe like a, a silver kill coil inside of it to uh, prevent uh, algae and things growing, basically. Uh, what I'm going to do is use Mayhem's concentrate with my deionized. Now this is basically a concentrated um, mix that you can add to your DI that includes your biocides and your anti-corrosives uh, and also some dye. This is blood red. So this will give it a nice red color which matches our fittings, matches the rest of the red in the build um, and whatever I end up doing with the rest of the paint hopefully. Um, but 
I, I like that. It, you know, you can see it in this build. It, it gives it a nice color, a nice look. Um, and I haven't had any trouble with it so far as far as things growing in it or, you know, fittings getting all nasty and things corroding or even my hard line looking bad. Um, in fact, I've got a build upstairs that has some pretty much ill hard line. And with the mayhems in it, it looks as clear as the day I put it in. So uh, it doesn't eat up your, your hard line or anything like that. So definitely not a bad thing. Mayhems is a good name in the, the game. So we're going to be using that as uh, part of our fluid. And I think that covers most of what we're going to need to build our loop. Um, like I said, next time we're going to go in, actually install all this stuff and get it all hooked up. Maybe, I don't know if we'll have uh, enough to actually start the computer up as far as wiring and everything. Uh, just have to get some drives figured out. But we will show you how, or we, me and the mouse in my pocket, I will show you how to fill your loop, get the air out of it, and uh, wire it up so that you can run it by itself and do a leak test on it. So that's very important. Uh, so it will actually have a running loop in it. Um, and we'll take a look at that. So I guess that's it for kind of the intro to custom water cooling. Uh, if you've got questions, leave them in the comments down at the bottom uh, or suggestions for other things for me to talk about. Um, maybe there was something that you had a question about that didn't get covered. So uh, leave them down there and I will hopefully get back to them as soon as I can. And then I say next video will be throwing the loop in. So come back and check that out. Thanks guys.